Welcome to today's video. This is a what's in my kickboxing bag. We've got my bag here. It's a nice big one uh, from Twins. I love all my Thai branded stuff. Um, it seems to last a lot longer. Uh, you know, I've had this bag since I was about 18. It's, there's a few tears in it and whatnot, a couple rips here and there, but it's held up really well. So, let's see what's in here. Now we'll start with the main pocket on the top. And we're gonna start down by your feet. So for my shin pads, I've got two options. These uh, bad boy MMA shin pads, they're a slip on shin pad. So it slips on kind of like a sock. Just slides onto you like there. It's got Velcro at the front here to tighten up. Uh, and the padding's fairly thin. The thing with the MMA shin pads, if you're grappling, you don't want your, your shin pads to be too thick so you can't close your guard, you can't sweep and stuff like that. You don't hit as hard with these as you would with a Thai style shin pad. Uh, but these were nice and cheap. Uh, I got these for like 10 quid. So they were awesome. Next up is my Thai style shin pads. Now again, I've had these for about 10 years. Um, they look a little bit worn, you know, they're a bit discoloured and stuff here. Bit bits of the, the label are a bit kind of fluffing out and uh, bits of stitching and stuff missing. But they're still solid. 10 years old, these are still fairly solid. The, the ankle straps are kind of coming a little loose, but you know, it's not too much for a problem. The thicker shin pads I can hit a lot harder with when I'm sparring and not worry too much about my, my partner. Um, they give my shins extra protection. You see a lot of videos lately, um, you know, people blocking low kicks and the person throwing the kick, the shins are snapping, it's disgusting. A nice thick shin pad like this is at least going to go some way to helping prevent that from happening. Um, the brand is Raja, again it's a Thai brand, um, a lot of my stuff is Raja, Twins, Fairtex, that kind of thing, they just, they're just built to last, like I say, 10 years old, still going strong, apart from a few bits of stitching here and there, we will dump them down there. Next up, working the way up the body, uh, is my groin guard, now you've got a couple of choices here, so I've got one by Triumph United, again it's an MMA brand, uh, and this is a Thai style uh, steel cup. I don't know if you'll hear that clear on the video or not, but it's, it's solid, it's steel, and it's got three strings. It's not my favourite to wear because this string here kind of goes between your cheeks. It's a bit like wearing a G-string, and despite popular belief, I don't do that very often. Um, but they're absolutely rock solid. Plastic cups, you know, if you if you take a real kind of whack, you know, a round kick or a knee, plastic cups can tend to split, and they can trap bits that you don't want trapping. So steel cups are awesome. There's tutorials all over YouTube, you know, how to tie the two side strings to make them kind of into leg hoops and look a bit more like that. And your legs go through there on either side as opposed to having a, a G string on. Steel cups, again, I think this was from Made for Fighters. Quite cheap, it was like £10 or so. To save your crown jewels, it's not a lot to pay. Steel cup. The other kind of cup I've got, it's a more dense kind of plastic. And it's got a rubber, you know, edge in here, so it's not going to dig into your sharp bits of plastic and stuff. Um, and a lot of people slide these down the boxes. Now, if you're wearing baggy boxes, they'll flip out and slide down your leg. So they're not too good like that. But this, this brand, this, this UFC one, it came with a pair of compression shorts. And on the inside of the shorts, you won't be able to see, but there's a piece of Velcro here. And it opens up so the cup slips in the front and it velcros closed. There's no no wiggle room, it's not gonna move. Plus if you're wearing like you know baggy tie short sort of thing, you've got something underneath to uh, cover your modesty. They're a little bit more expensive, but to have the two parts for, for one I don't think it's a bad price, it was about £30. And the, the plastic's more dense, it's not a cheap uh, kind of like cricket box um, plastic, it's a bit more dense. So that's my options for growing guards. Most of the time when I train, I'll wear the Thai style shin pads um, and I'll wear the cup with the suppression shorts. Just personal preference. Um, again, working up, we're going to my knees. My, my knees aren't great. One of my, my, my left knees is a bit knackered, so I've, I've got a couple of supports. Um, my first one's a Fumetsu one. Again, it's, it's more of a sleeve sort of thing. You know, it's got a breathable back, it's got a breathable front, there's holes everywhere. And as well as it being a compression, it kind of it keeps my knee nice and tight here. There's a nice thick pad in the middle, you can see the shape of it here. 
with the rhino in the middle. At least I think it's a rhino. And it's a nice thick pad, so if you're grappling, um, when you shoot for takedowns and stuff, your knee's hitting the floor. It's not your knee smashing off the floor. It's got a little bit of padding to support. And again, it's a nice compressed one, this. Just make sure you get one that fits your leg. This was about £13, which again is not too bad. It saves my leg a lot of injury. Uh, my other one is just kind of a generic spores one. You know, it's got the open patella cut, uh, cut here with a bit of padding around it in the circle. Uh, and it's a Velcro one, so it just fits to your leg. You know, if you've got a bigger leg, you don't tie it as tight. Smaller leg, tie it a bit tighter. Again, if you can't try it before you buy it, you know, wear one that fits you. And I'll take both of them. They'll both be in my bags all the time. Um, I'll have one at the gym and one in my kit bag. In case I misplace one, I've got another ready. Um, moving up again, I'm going to go to your hands now. A little bit different from the norm, I've got my own boxing gloves. So, a nice yellow and black. Kind of bright, I like to stand out a little bit. Now they're extended here, so when you put these on, they're actually a lot longer than a traditional boxing glove. They come all the way down your forearm, and the padding here is used for blocking kicks. So as my opponents are throwing round kicks, instead of taking it on my forearm, I've got a nice shield here, and I can double up, I can block this way, and then counter punch, kick, you know, I can catch the kicks and whatnot. The padding's great on them, um, and it's got my logo just in the middle here, so they're nice to have. <laughs> These are 14 ounce. Now I'm quite lucky with boxing gloves. I've got everything from um, 4 ounce MMA gloves right up to I think my biggest set of gloves is 20 ounce. Um, and I was giving them as a gift. They're awesome. I like using them on the bags. But my my 14s I use for most of my stuff. My pad work, um, bag work. I use them for sparring as well if my partners don't mind. Next up, going to my teeth. I've got a fake tooth. If it gets knocked out, you know it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt my wallet as well. And I'm very lucky. My cousin actually made my gum shield. I've got a couple here. So, the first one, this is my oldest one. She made a long time ago. Is the Irish flag. It's got a couple Irish flags on the side as well. And it's got my surname just on the front there. So that's quite an old one. I've had that quite a long time. And the second one she made, just a plain black one. Like I say, just plain black. Got the logo on the front there, if you can see. And again, you know, they're fitted gum shields, so they don't fall out. If you put it in, and you talk with the gum shield in, obviously you talk a bit different, but it's not falling out. Um, I do have a backup, just here. And it's just a generic oil and bite, you know, the two pound, whatever they are. I don't like these. Um, that's my last resort. Again, two gum shields. I've got one at the gym, one in the bag covering all my bases. So, gum shields there. Now, headgear. I've got a few different pieces. Um, when I started competing, I used this top 10 headguard. And it's quite dense foam. It's not solid. You can see, you can, you can crush it up and stuff. But it takes a shot quite well. Absorbs the impact. But when you move to kind of more full contact stuff, it's not as good. It's good for light sparring and light competition. But again, Raja, this was originally my brother's. Um, it's a Raja face saver, so the bar here covers your nose and whatnot. And this, this really does take impact. If you're wearing this and you get hit, you don't feel it. That's good for heavy sparring, but still move your head. You know, you don't want to rely on.